All right. Sorry, it's been a while, guys. I've been sick. I think my voice can make it through a whole video now. But um, this is going to be part seven of God, my testimony and journey with God, what I believe and why. And at this point, I'd already been in and out of the churches. I had seen miracles in the churches. I'd seen miracles out of the churches. I'd come out of the Bible. I'd preached the Bible as the mark of the beast. I lived in uh, communities pretty much off grid with believers and I've talked to thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people online and all these different beliefs and everything that they think. Well, all right, so I'm up in Ohio and I wrote a book, but I still had Harlan in my head. So the book was not right. The book was half right and half wrong because I still couldn't get over all the things that I'd seen in the spirit with Harlan and stuff and all the visions, the dreams, the miracles and everything else and the revelations. All right, so I'm in Ohio. I've written this book. Me and Harlan are having problems. He's the one who preaches the Bible's the mark of the beast. And we're having issues now. And uh, it looks like this video might be out of sync. I'm still going to make it, but it just looks like my mouth is moving at a different time that, um, the, uh, you know, that I'm saying things. So I hope it doesn't look like that. Sorry. All right. And now... Okay, we've had tons of problems at this point. But then I see this uh, vision of getting, all right, that God told me I had something to do. He said, you're about to, something, a very big project. He said something about a very big project. So I'm going to have this very big project. And he shows me Harlan and Diana, and they walk up to me while I'm trying to do this project for God. And they turned into these big German shepherds, and they bit my arm. And the spirit said, these dogs steal the word of God, right? And they latched onto my arm and said, these dogs steal the word of God. So I've got this in my head before all this starts. Well, then I had a buddy that I used to talk to that also preached the Bible's the mark of the beast. And we'd like do it on pal talk and stuff. And, uh, you know, I had a big room up there that had like 75 people in it at once. And that's pretty big for pal talk and people coming in and out constantly. And um, he was homeless. He was kicked out of his house and homeless for like seven days. And I had this vision of him coming to my house. And the same night, he had almost the same vision of coming to my house. So I told him, hey, come on over to my house. So he hitchhiked all the way from uh, Branson, Missouri to my house. And whenever he got there, like we thought, hey, it's just going to be us. You know, this is cool. And And I told him about my dreams and stuff about like having a farm and everything and a house and stuff. And so we were talking like, Hey, yeah, that's cool. Maybe it'll be us. And he thought that was a cool idea. So we thought we were going to go out there and we were going to do these things. Right. Well, and then we see these visions of a black guy. He saw a bunch of visions of this black guy. And I saw visions of a black guy too, coming to us. Right. And we were like, okay. And we knew one black guy. Well, then one morning I had a vision of this black guy because we still didn't know what was going on yet exactly. And I had a vision of this black guy getting chased by a knife by his family. And I talked to Stephen that day or Chris now. And he calls himself Chris. That's his middle name. And I talked to Stephen that day and his girlfriend literally tried to like, she cut him with a steak knife and took the kids, right? Whenever I have this dream. And so he comes with us too. So now Stephen's here. And then we all had a vision of leaving on May 9th, on Friday, May 9th. I had a vision of leaving on Friday and they had visions of leaving on May 9th, both of them. So we were going to leave on May the 9th to go to the last place that I'd seen in the spirit, which was South Carolina. So we went to South Carolina and all of us are in South Carolina and still we don't realize at this time that it's this thing about getting people together. Exactly. Oh, yeah, we did. Because Steve had a vision of this, uh, this like white thing that an angel was riding up in the sky and it didn't have any eyes. And like the angels shined a flashlight around and he said, the children of God are scattered. So we're like, oh, he's wanting us to get people together. So then we go down to South Carolina and we're there. And we get, and we're seeing dreams and you know, like at this point, we're seeing the same dreams and same visions at the same time. We're all seeing Jesus. We're all seeing God. We're seeing miracles. We saw uh, an angel just come down like 
And all of us at the same time saw this angel. I was saying something, and this thing, this big white ball, like you couldn't see through it. It was white, you know, came down and hit my head. And as soon as it hit my head, I looked at like all of us looked at it at the same time and it bounced out. Like we all saw this. Um, one day we're praying about just to give you an example. One day it was like, What do you want us to do today? And we, me and Stephen both get in the spirit at the same time. And I came out, I was kind of looking at him funny, like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know, man. I just saw something weird. I, you know. And he's like, well, what'd you see? And I was like, I saw an insurance lady and getting insurance and stuff. And he was like, I saw the exact same thing. And then he looks up and today's the date that his insurance was due. So we paid his insurance. But I know that's small uh, compared to a lot of the other stuff. We saw Jesus. We saw God. We saw the devil. We saw these amazing visions, right? Uh, throughout this time. And we're down there in South Carolina, and then I start seeing visions of Becky. I didn't know where Becky lived, and we wind up going to get Becky and picking her up in Florida. So we drove down to Florida to pick up Becky, and then from there, I see a vision of my brother, my older brother, who's in Tennessee. So we come back to Tennessee from South Carolina, right? And we're in Tennessee, staying at a hotel, spending a ton of money. <laughs> and um, I, I get really sick. Like, I'm supposed to talk to my brother, right, about coming with us. And I get really sick, really ill. Like, I start shaking, like, instantly. I'm like, my uh, kidneys and stuff started hurting, and I started shaking. And I said, why? Why is this happening? You know, because, I mean, it was, like, the fastest I'd ever gotten sick. I said, why is this happening? And he said, for your brother, he said, you're giving, you're taking some of his pain or something like that. And I call my brother. And he's like, oh, man, I can't even move. You know, he's like, I can't move. He's like, uh, I think he said he like peed blood and stuff like he was shaking and everything. So we tell him about what's going on. He wants to come and he crawled out to his truck to throw his bags and stuff in it and left his family and everything else to come right with us. And from there, we see uh, Houston in Ohio. Right. I knew that he lived in Ohio, but I had no idea where he lived. In Ohio. So we ask God where to go, and my brother gets over his sickness, and I get over mine. You know, I took some of his pain away from him or something. It was miraculous the way that it happened. I didn't know that he was sick. Nobody knew that he was sick. And then I have that, you know. So you see how you see how these kind of miracles puts in your head, oh my God, we're doing it. Like this is it. This is God. You know, there is no way to make this stuff up. You know, so we're all on board it, but but we're all trying to overcome the flesh. We didn't eat anything bad. Uh, we literally planned our meals. It was straight cultish. Stephen had visions that we shouldn't wear sports things or anything like that or things. With, so, I mean, we're going straight cult, straight, perfect, holy flesh, right? Because we've also got in our head, too, Harlan a little bit. Some people knew that we were having trouble with Harlan. Some people didn't know we were having trouble with Harlan. Uh, Derek did know about the vision about uh, Harlan biting my arm. I told him. I said, whenever all this falls apart, I just want you to know that I saw that it fell apart because of Harlan. I told him this before it all started. Once we realized we were actually getting a group together, and I told him, I said, I want you to know this before it all happens. Because I saw Harlan and Diana bite my arm and the spirit said, these dogs steal the word of God. So he knew, you know. And um, all right, so where am I? So we're in Tennessee. We get my brother. And then we ask where to go next. And we see, he said, I got in the spirit and he said, head west and I'll tell you more. So we got this spring that we always go get our water from and come straight out of the ground. We fill up our jugs, you know, and get our water. And I was like, well, let's just go up to the spring. You know, that's west of here. So we go up to the spring and it's right off the interstate. And then Stephen has a vision in the other car and says uh, that we should go. He said, I saw us driving up I-75 a long way. So we're going up I-75. And then... We get to about Columbus or where we would turn off to go to Columbus. And Stephen calls me and says, hey, man, I just had a couple of visions about Columbus and a package being received in Columbus. So I think we should go towards Columbus. I was like, all right. You know, so we're following dreams and visions. Right. And we're having visions constantly. All of us will just get in the spirit, uh, ask a question, get in the spirit. And we'll also do this. So it's so plain. It's so real that this stuff is happening because we won't even tell the other person what we're praying about. We'll say, hey, I need an unspoken, and they'll see exactly what we're praying about. And I can do this today. That's how Derek got here in the first place, to 
to us being friends because he messaged me one day. He was he was in this for a couple of years. The Bible's the mark of the beast before this happened, before he came to my house and everything. But how we met was him messaging me, and I had no idea who he was. And he said, hey, man, I need you to pray for me. He said, don't just say that you'll pray for me. I want you to pray for me. Go pray for me and tell me what you see. And whenever I sent him the message back, he was in awe. He was like, in huge letters, he wrote back. He's like, oh, my God, you're so real. He was like, how could you possibly know that about me because of stuff that I saw? So you see how we could be geared to nothing's going to stop us. We've seen so many amazing things. Nothing is going to stop us. You know what I mean? Well, this has to be the truth. We've never heard of anything like this in our whole life. And we are seeing things come to pass in everything that we do. And we were in South Carolina so we could drive and pick up Becky from Florida. You know, and then we come back to Tennessee and I get sick and my brother's like that. And then now we're heading up I-75 because of visions. And then we go to Columbus because of visions. Well, I was born and raised in Ohio, but I did not know that there was a Lisbon, Ohio. So we're heading towards Columbus. And once we get into Columbus, I had a couple visions of, I was like in a grocery store and there was a shoe behind the counter. I don't want to get in the whole thing, but he said head towards Lisbon. And I was like, Lisbon? Where's Lisbon? So I look up Lisbon and there's a Lisbon, Ohio. You see, we were going to keep going this way, right? Or right through Columbus. But this changed our track to going towards Lisbon. So we're heading up towards Lisbon. And uh, well, we'd stopped at a hotel and there was some cool stuff that happened at the hotel too. Still tons of visions. We were running out of money. And my brother at this time brought his truck with him. Well, that thing cost a lot of money, you know, and we're running out of money. And while we're at this hotel, uh, no, that was at the other hotel. Sorry. Okay. We stopped at this hotel and then the next day we're heading up towards Lisbon, right? And I'm sitting here talking to my brother. I'm in the truck with him. We've got our car back there and Steven's car up here in front of us. And I'm sitting here talking to him on the road, just talking and I'm wide awake and I'm talking to him. And the next thing I know, I go from being wide awake to, I mean, I can, I wasn't drifting off. I just completely fell asleep instantly. And whenever I fell asleep, I saw Jesus and he put his hands up three times and said, you know, telling me to stop three times. So as soon as I came out of the spirit, I was like, exit here, exit here, exit here. And I text them up in the front car and they pull off on the exit and Jesus didn't tell us to go anywhere else. So I stay in this little tiny town called Newcomers Town, this little tiny place. And we're there for three days trying to get a hold of Houston. He hasn't been online for three days. And this is whenever, while we're in that hotel, we were running out of money. And uh, I was having this conversation with my brother. Stephen was outside uh, sitting in the car or something. And I went and asked Stephen, I said, hey, pray about something for me, will you? Um, or no, me and Joe were outside talking, my older brother, and we were talking about selling his truck. And I went in and talked to Stephen and I said, Hey, uh, unspoken, you know, pray for something for me. And he gets in the spirit and he comes out of the spirit and he goes, I saw a truck with a for sale sign and a wallet full of money. And, you know, and he had no idea. And I was like, all right, so we'll sell Joe's truck. Right. And we can't get a hold of Houston. We can't get a hold of Houston. And then we have visions to leave. God told us to leave. So now I'm really confused. God, you took me out in like this trance and told me to stop here for three days. And you told me that we were picking up Houston. So I'm like, why on earth are you telling us to leave now? You know, well, Houston had already seen visions because we talked to him online too. And he'd already seen visions and he had his bags packed by the door. He already had his bags packed without knowing that we were even together. He didn't know that this group thing was happening. He didn't know we were traveling around, picking people up. He didn't know anything. He was in complete shock because he also knew we didn't know where he lived, you know? And he was in complete shock whenever, all right, so we're packing up to leave. And then that night, Steven sees a vision of Houston running as we're leaving in like a helicopter. Houston runs and jumps and grabs onto the helicopter just as we're leaving, right? So just get a feel for the stuff that's going on here, man. And the visions at the exact same time, which me and Elena had already had that before, but I'm saying now we have this group together. I can't get into it. See like 20 other things just popped into my head, but I cannot, I don't have time for all that. But all right, so we pack up to leave and what happens? Houston gets online and we're like, hey man, we're like, we're in newcomers town. And he goes, you're where? He's like, oh my God. He's like, where? And we were like, we're at the super eight. He's like, dude, that's literally one mile from my house. 
He was like, that's one mile from my house. And he's like, and I've already got my stuff packed. God told me to pack my stuff. So we pick up Houston. He comes with us. But see, we misinterpreted visions. While we were here, God had told Stephen, he said, if you go to the wrong city, and he showed us, we would be running naked through the streets with nothing, right? We'd run out of everything and have nothing. And God said, if you go to the wrong city, this is what will happen, all right? But I misinterpreted this vision I had of somebody else that lives out in California. Whenever we had also seen visions of going back to where my brother lived, back to his house. So we wouldn't have ran out of money if we'd have done that. Uh, if we went straight back to Tennessee, to my brother's house, that would have been fine. But since I had had a vision of this person, and as soon as we pick up this person, I have a vision of this person. Then I had a vision of two phone calls with a person. And I thought, oh my God, they live out in California. We should go out to California and pick them up, right? So we leave from there. We're going to California. Well, we ran out of money in Topeka, Kansas. It was terrible. It was like the worst thing you can imagine. I mean, Topeka is terrible anyway. And we're heading towards Topeka, Kansas. And Stephen at this time is like worshiping me. And I mean, we've gotten in an argument about it. I was like, you need to tell me what you see. I was like, I'm no better than you. You need to tell me what you see. We're following everybody's visions here, right? So don't be afraid to tell me if I'm doing something wrong, you know? I mean, it was really making me angry. Well, he wasn't telling me. He wouldn't tell me the visions that he had telling me that I was wrong. So we're out here in Topeka. And then we sell Joe's truck, right? So that gives us money and we straight head for California with only 700 bucks. Well, at this time, gas prices out there are like 525 a gallon. Well, we weren't you know, anticipating that. So we're heading out to California. And as soon as we left, Stephen has a vision of Jesus and he stopped us on the road. And he said, your mind was far from me today. But then he said it in like an antagonizing way. He was like, but go ahead, continue on your journey. And Stephen told me that, and I was like, should we turn around? And he was like, no, man, you said that we should go to California. And you had those visions, and he was like, no, I don't think it meant for us to turn around. We, we just need to focus on Jesus more, right? So I had visions at this point, too, just driving down the road. It was forever. I mean, it took forever to get out there. And we're driving down the road, and I, like, get my head tilted back. And, uh, no, first, I, like, came out of the spirit, like, eating a cracker. Like, Jesus handed me this cracker. And I came out of the spirit, like, you know, doing that. And then I was like, I was like still half in it. And I was like, did you just, I was going to say, did you just, was that your body or something, you know? And as soon as I said that, I get in the spirit again and my head's tilted back and I wake up to like drinking something, you know, he had just had me take spiritual communion with him. Right. So, and then we go through Vegas, we're going through Vegas and Stephen has a vision of a hand coming down, putting the car in reverse. And he keeps trying to put the car in reverse and we keep putting it back in drive. And he said, I thought it was a demon. And then he's like, no, no, it wasn't a demon. It was probably an angel. It was probably an angel, right? So you see how everything's getting confused now because I'm going the wrong way. I'm going towards California because I misinterpret this thing where I was only supposed to call the person, right? But I don't realize that at this point. I think we're supposed to go pick this person up and they're going to come too, right? So... Uh, that was actually an angel telling us to turn around and that we're going the wrong way. So we go all the way out to California and then I say, all right, what do you want me to do? How do we find this person? I thought we were going to find this person like we found uh, Houston. And then the spirit said to me in a way like, you're going to call her now that you're like an hour from her house. I was like, that's rude. I was like, what? Like, I thought, aren't we supposed to be coming out here? So everything went bad. Like we had no money at all. We had to pawn stuff to get in a hotel. Eventually, I had to borrow money to come back because we had no money and ran out of everything. But while we were in California, we went and preached on Long Beach. And we we're holding up signs that say the Bible's the mark of the beast, the Bible's 666, the Bible's an idol. And we're all out here preaching to everybody on Long Beach, right? Well, after a whole day of preaching, this guy comes up, tattoo on his forehead, you know, and his buddy, like, you know, he's this black guy with like these different color contacts, like going around us on his bike all crazy and stuff. And the guy acts like he's going to hit us with a, a freaking metal pole, right? And uh, so, well, then the guy leaves. I go to the bathroom. I come back out of the bathroom, and they're all screaming at each other. And I'm like, and Houston's walking up. And I was like, oh, my God, Houston's going to get in a fight with these guys. Uh, so I was like, hey, Houston, just let's stay here. I don't want these guys to think it's like a gang thing or go up there and cause a fight or intimidate them. And like, so then, 
All right, it all escalates. They're screaming. This guy's screaming about the Bible and how how he's got the Holy Spirit in him too. You know, I got that shit in me too. You know, and he's like got this huge tattoo and everything, and he's like this really rough character, and uh, like screaming and everything. And then somebody winds up calling the cops. There's this huge group of people around with their phones out and everything. Somebody winds up calling the cops because the guy throws his book bag down, and whenever he did, all these bullets came out of his book bag, and they're like, "We're calling the cops!" And like screaming and uh they so they're calling the cops and the guy finally left and uh then he came back by because we went back out to preach we're like hey yeah we just got persecuted for jesus you know so we go back out to preach the bible's the mark of the beast again and that's whenever he came up at the end and he was like uh, no that was before then he just came up and he's like man forget you guys you know like uh so he came back by while we were doing that but um yeah so this was a crazy trip, and we are still seeing amazing things, though. And that's why, no matter how bad it got, nobody could, like, get out of that, you know? So then, we borrow money to go back. But instead of going straight back to Tennessee, we thought maybe this is the time we wanted us to get our farm in Missouri, because I'd seen something about Missouri and how we should probably go back to Missouri. So we go out to Missouri, nothing works out. At this point, we're in St. Joseph, Missouri. And we stay out there, and... uh for a while trying to look for a place. Steven's car breaks down and we had to spend $500 on his car. And then we knew we were gonna run out of money again. So it was like, all right, let's go back to Tennessee. Because then that day, Houston saw a vision. He said he was helping Joe on his house in Tennessee. Because, uh, all right, we get to that. But he's helping Joe on his house in Tennessee, you know, and he had a couple of these visions. And then we see visions about why, and it was so we could sell Joe's house to make money to, go and do the things that we needed to do, you know? So oh, and in that vision, he said, in the vision, he asked Joe, and Joe said, I've been working on this for seven years. And so he came out and I was like, oh my God, Joe's been at that house, working on that house for seven years. And it's like, all right, let's go back. You know, and then we realized we misinterpreted visions and Jesus warned us that if we went to the wrong city, we were gonna lose everything and be running naked in the streets and it was gonna be a bad time, right? So that's what happened exactly what he said that's what happened so we go back to tennessee and my brother's got this big house you know that we added like seven rooms on and uh, it's just huge you can sell it for a lot of money so we're all going to work on this house and we're all going to um you know get we're going to all get out of debt we're sharing all of our money i mean this is as cultish as you can get we're not eating anything bad we're not nobody's smoking or drinking or anything like that and nobody's doing we're not watching television or listening to the radio or anything. But a lot of people have jobs now. We all went and got jobs and we're all gonna work together and get out of debt. And we're gonna sell this house and we're gonna go get something big and we're gonna have this little community like, like we had out in Missouri, right? So as we're staying at my brother's, things really start getting bad, you know? I mean, you got people not smoking, you got everybody overcoming everything. Me and my wife don't even wanna have sex because other people there aren't allowed to, you know? So we wouldn't have sex or anything, hardly ever. Um, I mean, hardly, maybe a few times in this whole time because nobody else could. Nobody else had their partners with them, you know? So we felt bad. So, so you can imagine all the tension that's going on. We've all gotten rid of everything that our flesh desires. So everybody starts arguing. Things are getting bad. Becky starts acting really strange. She's crying all the time. She wants to go back home to see her grandson, right? And she's mentioning that. And then she stops talking to us completely. And then Derek is confused, which she had every right to be. And so he's bringing up doubt all the time and everything. And we're all living in this same house. And that's whenever, this is the scariest thing that I cannot even, unless you see it, I wouldn't have believed it. I would not have believed this. And you're not gonna believe it, okay? You might believe what I'm saying, but you're not gonna understand what actually happened. You're not gonna feel that fear unless something like this has happened to you. And we've never heard of anything like this in our life. But we're all staying there. Becky won't even come in the house. She wants to sleep in the garage. She won't eat with us. She won't even look at us. Like She's acting like somebody that's friggin' possessed or something at this point. Um, so, because everything got confused out in California, everybody had a bad time and everybody's on edge now. So me, Steven, and Houston, no, not yet. So me and my wife are downstairs in the bottom room. There's like seven rooms in this house, like seven bedrooms, like five, at least five bedrooms. And people are in different bedrooms, right? My brother and his wife are over here. Derek's upstairs over here. Me and my wife are in this other bedroom. 
Steven and Houston are up here and Becky is out in the garage, right behind, right outside our window. She's out in the garage. All right, so me and my wife are laying there. We're the only ones awake. It's like three in the morning. We're talking and everything. And all of a sudden we hear this screech. The most scary, demonic, all I can say is banshee. Like, sounds like a scream of a fucking banshee. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. But it started with moaning, actually. We're sitting here and we're going, did you hear that? Like, what was that? It started with moaning. We hear this moaning going on. And it's coming from outside our window. And then it turns into this, ah, like coming at us, like really fast, right? And at the same time, then we hear somebody scream and like three different screams come out of them. We hear somebody else laughing insanely and somebody else going, wow, wow, like that. And then we hear this really deep scream and this other really loud freaking high pitched scream all at the same time. We're scared shitless. We think that somebody like just did a fucking human sacrifice outside, right? We thought it was a neighbor's like doing some kind of human fucking sacrifice. The next day we went and asked everybody about it. Did you guys hear that last night? Everybody says no. Nobody heard it. Uh, they were all sleeping. All right. Scariest thing to date that we'd ever seen in our lives. Okay. The next day. I'm upstairs with Steven in Houston and we start seeing all these visions about how we should leave that house. We start seeing like caution tape around the house and this evil sword was stuck in the house. And then we all see this vision of a gun at the same time, but I didn't know what that meant. All three of us got in the spirit at the same time and saw a handgun, right? At the time, I didn't know what that meant. If you see a handgun in the spirit, it means speed. Okay. It means quickly, whatever you're supposed to do, do it quickly. I get that now because I've had so many visions and stuff, but at the time, I didn't know, but we knew there was a problem, and he was like, we were casting devils out of the house, and they'd come right back and laugh at us, like they wouldn't leave, right? And, but then, so then we were all going to leave, and then I see this vision that says, it's quarantined on the gate, and says, do not mass exit. So he didn't want everybody to go. He just wanted some people to go, not everyone, okay? Okay, then, this is the night after what I just told you about. Me, Houston, and Steven are all laying down. And Stephen, all right, I wake up, like Stephen's at my feet. We're all on the floor. We didn't have beds in this room. We're all on the floor. Stephen's over there. Houston's head's over here by mine. I'm, well, by my like midsection. I'm laying this way with my head back here. And Stephen's at my feet up here, okay? And I wake up to this screech, this absolutely loud scream, like, you wouldn't believe how loud this scream is. I wish that somehow I could make this happen. <laughs> or just like, no, I don't want it to happen. <laughs> but I'm saying like, I wish that I could inject the feeling and what actually happened in here to you. But, and this is what I'll end the video with. And uh, I'll start the next one with the other stuff. So Steven screams. And then I wake up, but I'm not really awake. It's like I'm half awake. It's like trance awake and he turns he pops up 250 pounds at least this black guy but at least but he's more all right and he just i mean he popped up like something you'd see on a freaking movie or dragon ball z or something and he's like hovering in the air and his face is this big like his mouth looks like the cheshire cat and his eyes are blood red and he's got this like you can kind of see steven behind him and then there's like this moving face in front of him, right? And he's up and he's about to kill me. He's going to attack me and kill me. He's up in the air, like, and he just looks like a freaking lion. And he's up in the air, like, no human could make this noise, you know? And Houston jumps up at the same time. And both of us in sync went, we throw our arms out and we're both like, ah, like screaming back, like, ah, we do it three times in a row, all right? And then Stephen falls down. But whenever Stephen fell down, it was like this. All three of us just fell back down and we were all going back to sleep. And as we're going back to sleep, it's like, it's like I was fighting to not go back to sleep. You remember how I told you that one? I was like, I'm, I'm falling back in. I'm falling back in the spirit. Well, see, I'd had that happen before. Well, this time I'm like, and I was like, no, I like jumped up and I was like, no, I was like, we're not going to sleep after that. And as soon as I said that, 
Houston like started rubbing his face back and forth on the pillow. He's like, that did not just happen. That did not just happen. That did not just happen. And Steven was like, what's going on guys? And his chest hurt really bad. And he's like, oh man, my chest hurts really bad. And me and Houston tell him the exact same story. We were both in sync screaming at him, right? And we tell him the exact same story that, that two freaking faces are in there at once, right? Okay. And, um, all right, Stephen doesn't believe it at first. He says, no, I have asthma, and sometimes I just wake up and scream. And we're like, dude, this was not asthma. So we're like trying to convince him, like, dude, listen, you just turned into a freaking devil, and you tried to kill me. And he said he was trying to kill me, too. Like, Houston saw him, he was going to jump on me. And both of us felt, like, possessed, too, like we had super strength or something. So then whenever Houston looks at Stephen's knee and goes, dude, your knee's bleeding. And... Like, because that's how fast he popped up. His knee had drips of blood going off of it. And he touched his knee. And as soon as he touched it, his face, he was like, like, I've never seen anybody so scared in their life because he remembered what happened. Then we start talking about the dreams that were happening beforehand. And Stephen's dream was he was delivering pizza and I gave him these directions. And he said, I don't need your directions. I got this. So he goes up in his dream and he's like going up the Tower of Babel in this car. He says he's going to go his own way. And by the time he gets to the top, then the, he gets out and it's a dead end. And this devil comes up behind him and grabs him and he screams, right? And that's the last thing he remembered. And uh, the next day, we couldn't, like hardly any of us could even talk. Uh, our voices were so freaking hoarse. But see, my wife called because she heard it from downstairs. She was downstairs that night. And she heard it. And uh, she called and said, was, she said, did you guys hear that? And I was like, yeah, it's us. Come up here. I was like, it was us. And um, all right. So then, <laughs> so then we find out that the night before, all that stuff that we heard was them. All of it was the people in the house, you know, all of it. And every one of them remembered it because after we almost fell back down and we're going to forget that this happened too with Steven turning into that and trying to kill me. After that, uh, we started talking about what we heard last night. My wife comes up and is like, dude, you guys should have heard what we heard last night. And then that's whenever Stephen was like, oh, my God, because we hadn't told them like the noises that we hadn't told Stephen that noise. But we said it sounded like a human sacrifice and like people moaning and screaming. And Stephen was like, oh, my God, I remember waking up last night and Houston was rolling around like a crazy person laughing. And he said, and I remember jumping up and going, wow. And as soon as he said that, I was like, oh, my God, that is the exact voice that we heard last night. So then everybody remembers that last night they all woke up in a freaking trance at the same time, screaming, uh, moaning, yelling, laughing. And Derek had like three voices coming out of him at once. OK. And this happened to be look, I'm putting all information in here because I want you guys to like um, come to your conclusions with me and help and, you know, tell me what you think about this. But this happened to also be on like the witch's solstice. It was like there was a super moon at the time. And it was like some it was like a time that witches has, had waited for for a long time, you know. Um, so, yeah, so you can imagine now and not too long from now, we're going to get out of that house and we're the group's all going to split up. We see visions about Derek leaving and Becky leaving because Becky wanted to be back home. So, uh we we're like, well, she shouldn't be here then, you know? So we get her, got our bus ticket and sent her back home. Uh, Derek left and then Derek came back. And then we all wind up together in a hotel again, at least some of us. The group is split up at this point. Some of us, we're, we're, we're divided. And we wind up at hotels again. And then, God, I wish you could have been there to see that. All right. Nobody could ever tell any of us that the spirit is not real. Um, and this keeps us hanging on even longer. Seeing stuff that you've never heard about like that keeps you hanging on longer than. All right. But you know, it took years to come out of the Bible in the church. Really, man, cults and things really get a hold of you. Uh, every religion has a hold on somebody because of miracles, because of feelings, because of visions and stuff. So I've got like two more videos to make probably, and then I'm going to go with my conclusion, but uh, I'm just going to end this one here. It's pretty long. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.